first got into madness would have been 40 years ago 1979 and that's why I'm doing the show because it's their ruby anniversary and I thought it'd be just quite nice to pay tribute in a, in a, in a funny sort of way by doing a show um, yeah I got into them uh, yeah I just used to love pop music in general and I think they were very resonant to me they hit a nerve they kind of captured everything I liked about pop music um, they were they looked great they sounded great they were funny they just seemed to tick all the boxes for me and I continued my love for them for a long time and I really got into them as a teenager and became immersed into the whole uh, madness ethos <laughs> I mean I liked lots of other music at the time but madness were they were the band for me and obviously you know as I got into my 20s and they split up and they had their wilderness years and they came back and and I've just I've just always kept my eye on them always followed them I still have a great love for them and uh, yeah so I'm even I even saw them about a month ago up the road from where I live in London uh, in, in up the road from 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 uh, Tufnell Park Archway they were played in, in Hampstead Kenwood with a full orchestra so that was great yeah Excellent. so I'm still there for them loyal furiously loyal and you met them as well I have met them individually I've actually I got to know Suggs through the business really through through entertainment and um, I've, I've met each of them through one situation or another not always after a gig I, I met one um, Bedders the bass player at a friend's party and I cornered him <laughs> over, over the, the twiglets for about an hour going on and on about how much I love madness but yeah it, they're, they're, they're a good bunch of lads I have to say very approachable very down to earth no no pop starriness with them one direction they are not uh, no uh, no I'm not that close with them I mean I won't I won't <laughs> pretend that I'm going drinking with Chaz Smash every day no they're, they're you know they're just you know I mean I know Suggs a little bit but only in a kind of a, a nod and a hello outside some watering hole in Soho but no uh, they, they've got their life and I've got mine the furthest I've gone to watch madness probably uh Gillingham <laughs> in Kent no I've never no I've never been one of these people who've who've kind of gone to every gig on the, on on the on the tours and, and 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 camped outside their houses I was never that kind of fan so I did have some kind of balance in in that respect I just wanted to be in them really I, I wanted to be the the eighth fantasy member of man well that was interesting where well, I had to play a screaming citrus fruit every Sunday morning <laughs> in that period for hangover students hungover students rather uh, now that was great fun and it and it's good because I've got to work with Stuart Lee again and obviously I've done Richard Herring's podcasts and, and they're good lads again you know that that was yeah very enjoyable job they used they they did a mold on my head a big prosthetic I think it cost a thousand pounds which was a lot of money in 1998 uh, to make this big sponge head and every s Sunday morning I get to the BBC or the Riverside Studios in Hammersmith and they paint my face orange and I go and put this big sort of pumpkin type sponge thing on my head and then I'd have to cram into this box and be crunched into it f for the show um, for the for the little scene I do with Mr. Stu and Mr. Rich, where I do a sort of notes and queries section, where I'd be curious about stuff and end up screaming and wanted to take over the earth, and, and you know, it was mad. Uh, again, a great fun. You know, I'm I've, I'm I'm blessed. I've got the, the best job in the world, and another comedy double act. I feel very honoured to have worked with. Um, yeah, it was it was brilliant being insulted by Marjorie Dawes. <laughs> On a, on, a, on, a, on a regular basis and, and the thing is I, I want to lose weight and I can never ever join a Weight Watchers thing now because I might get 
the mickey taken out of me oh look have you eaten any dust recently and all of that yeah <laughs> so it affected your whole life <laughs> oh yeah completely i now have morbid obesity <laughs> off the back of doing that show. Yeah. I was in a Doctor Who spoof with, with uh, David Williams again and the, the fantastic Mark Gatiss from the League of Gentlemen and creator of, of Sherlock, um, co-creator. Um, yeah, that, that, was, that was great fun doing that again. Uh, we nearly got into trouble with that. We had to change the script. <laughs> so the, ori the original version <laughs> that went out on the night is not the original version you see on YouTube or on the DVDs but I won't go into the reason why but it upset some of the old Doctor Who actors yeah so uh, Mr Gatiss was very diplomatic and, and quite rightly so the mole grips it was a yeah. student band and we used to um, do cover versions yeah and it made you realize how complicated complex madness songs are and they're not easy to do they're, because you realize how brilliant like the rhythm section alone and how and complicated the the keyboard parts and there's like progressive rock almost different time signatures they're, they are little gems of eccentric music which i think people don't quite uh, realize and take for granted that these that those records with the brilliant production with with Clive Langer are little treasures and they make it look so easy but it really is we did about four or five gigs it was a vanity project it got gave me the chance to pretend to be Suggs the Blues Brothers Tom Waits yeah and we went and the damned we did XTC no. we did the stranglers Elvis Costello the specials Prince Tom Jones Elvis Presley we, we, we covered the whole gamut of artists thing the thing is I sang I, I sing like an actor you know someone else should be doing it not me just done I've just done uh, Kevin Eldon's radio show Kevin Eldon will see you now for Radio 4. As far as any televisions coming up, uh, no. But I have been cast as the new James Bond. <laughs> exclusive. There you are, there's an exclusive for you. <laughs>